what describes what your life was like before this and then the leading up because there's like you're even talking about your crying, but I don't remember you actually talking that much about that you were much of a crier, but you've mentioned it like three or four times during the show, <laughs> which is like quite a bit different. Yeah. So in the best way possible that we just crack it open, I'd love to hear kind of that backstory leading up to showing the differences of the of the two race. I know for me, yeah, I, it was like I had a different heart, man. Like I was like my parents, though they didn't believe in Jesus, were like, what is wrong with you? You are a completely different person. Yeah. What was yours like? Yeah. Um, so you also had a lot more time, bro. You like, I was 18. Like you've lived this life, a yeah. marriage. Yeah. Like uh, it's just, it's very impressive that this is such a huge shift for you. Yeah. But you would have never really thought you were someone who was lacking much. Like you weren't really lacking. I mean, you, I, you know, eight figure company, like I've seen like yeah. your numbers and all these things. You weren't lacking money. You're not lacking a wife. You're not lacking a kid. Right. Right. There wasn't like lack, you know what I mean? But at the same time there was, I'm sure we'll hear it. Yeah. And, and, and it reminds me of the, you know, the Tony Robbins quote, you know, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And, wow. you know, I had, um, you know, I remember, you know, my first million dollar year was, 10 years ago, I think, um, first million dollar month was the next year. First million dollar day was the next year. Um, had $3 million days and, and I would just go from goal to goal, to goal, to goal, to goal. And I, and I would hit them, but I didn't feel any different. I always felt like there was something missing. And, and so mm -hmm. I've since learned that the term that I like the most around who I was, was an orphan spirit. And, mm. um, I was, I was, you know, looking to plug myself into something to make me feel whole, but nothing did it. So wow. even meditation, um, you know, making money, speaking on all these stages and, you know, all these different things, none of them, none of them filled the hole. And, and it reminds me, and I see this all the time in, in business of someone who, you know, you think has everything but they're still hustling and grinding to prove their worth. They're still hustling and grinding, but they still feel just as empty as they did when they were broke, maybe even more. Because when you're broke, you can justify and say, you know what, if I had a bunch of money, I'd feel a lot better. But then when you get there and you're like, oh, wait a minute, I, I, I feel worse actually. I'm no longer hungry because I got everything, but there's still something missing. And so it reminds me of, I saw an interview with, uh, um, when he was you know alive, uh, Kobe Bryant. They had just won the championship and, you know, he's on, he's on the, you know, the floor and people are kissing the trophy and they're making out and ticker tape and everything. And they're like, Kobe, you got to feel pretty good. You know? And he goes, I'm just ready for next year. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, like no celebration at all there. Right. Just next goal. And that's, that was me. You know, I'd never celebrated any, really any of this, these things, you know, from, coming out of foreclosure, from child abuse, from, you know, drug addiction, from suicide attempts, you know, all these different things. And so I'll tell you, man, there's, um, when you feel that it's like, a it's like a warm honey of the Holy spirit, like, like really step up in you, uh, it's moving. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how many times in the shower, I just, I just think about like my life and just think about how blessed I am and just, just how awesome this journey is. And, and, you know, and I, I there, there are times I'll cry in the shower now. I'm like a big wussy. There are times when a song will just trigger me, you know, in a, in a different way. And it's not a like, I'm sad. It's, it's a gratitude cry. It's a love cry. Yeah. It's a, oh my goodness. Thank you for, for, you know, doing what you did. You know, um, you know, Hebrews 12, two for the joy set before me, he endured the, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, right? Just thinking about that, just thinking about what, you know, he went through to eradicate the broken covenant from, you know, from, from Adam and Eve so that we could experience this helper in us all the time, this comforter, this, this wise counselor. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's a little overwhelming of, wow, like life is just so different now. All of a sudden I didn't 
question all my friendships like I used to. All of a sudden, I didn't need to, my wife to make me a priority because all of those are old wounds. All of those are childhood wounds. I don't need any of that stuff anymore. Those holes were filled. And I believe the only thing that can fill them is, is Jesus, is, is accepting God into your life and, and really stepping in that direction. Uh, that's the only thing that did it for me. And I tried a lot of things. Yeah. And when you talked about even the feeling, I think I've gone through this in my experiences of even building a business, kind of just becoming hardened to everything. I was just so zealous for the thing. And yeah. I, I come from, like I'm saying, like I was doing this as a Christian, like I come out of ministry and I'm really just like, I know that God is calling me to this and I really had good intentions to go make it happen. But it's kind of like David when when he was when Saul was delivered to him and he decided not to kill him because he knew it wasn't his job to go and and promote himself that he's waiting for God's promotion and he could have quickened God's will like it was his will to become king but he didn't quicken it and i felt like mm. i was trying to quicken it like i'm going to sure. learn from these heathens or do this tactic or just work harder than pray like just like kind of doing it in what's working for the world and as i did that I noticed that it just became hard to, to notice those types of feelings, like that feeling of gratefulness and, and peace, like yeah. righteousness, peace, and joy. Two of those are, are what would be considered a feeling. Peace, you can't really like feel righteousness, right? It's like kind of an example, but peace and joy yeah. are both pretty feeling styles, right? Yeah. If you don't have feelings, oh, sure. then, then you're not able to, to hit those. I remember going to a men's event. This was just maybe two, a year and a half ago, maybe. And after those two days of just sitting in the presence, I started noticing that I went when I went back to church on that Sunday, I was feeling something completely different. The gratitude. I was like, whoa, yeah. me being in this environment was almost like I was dry ground. And as I got water poured on me, I kind mm. of like wasn't so hard and cracked. I was more malleable again. Yeah. And that's what it reminded me of when you were talking about that. I just think that softened your heart, softened it. And again, yeah. I wasn't like in this place where you came radical transformation. Yeah. I was like radically transformed and just was trying to figure out my way. And I just didn't get it right the whole time. And now I'm realizing yeah. that which is why I'm yeah. doing what I'm doing now. And for your wife, I think this is very interesting. Kind of sounds like you had the transformation. I was going to ask that they say, and, and the reason why King's brotherhood even focused on men outside of the fact that I don't know what it's like to be a woman is that if a man has a transformation, there's about a 91% chance that the whole family follows suit. That the kids, yeah. the wife, they all, like, let's say oh, even yeah. salvation, same thing. For if a woman gets saved or a woman decides to get fit or any of these, just with the way that houses are built, it's just statistic. There's about an 18, 19% chance that the husband will follow suit. The kids mm. might, but the, the husband isn't going to do it. And the kids, it's a single digit. So, if it, like, for me, I got saved. Woohoo. There was, like, statistically, like, an 8% chance that. My whole family wow. follows you. Now, I'm not following the statistic. That's so interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. And so for you, that's interesting. I know a lot of guys out there, they want that alignment with the spouse. What was that like? Was it you guys both had an experience at the same time? I know you said it was analytical, but how have you guys merged those two yeah. together and consolidated that in your marriage with such a big transformation? She's married to a different version of you that hopefully is what she would say. Is yeah. Better. Yeah. Um, you know, I again, you know, nothing you ever do for the Lord is useless. So I studied, you know, masculine and feminine energy. And, you know, a lot of guys get it wrong. They think that they're, you know, I sure wish my you know, wife would support me more in my dreams and my, no, no, you're the feminine energy is there to challenge the man and, and, and make him better. Wow. And, yep. but on the flip side, feminine energy can't trust masculine energy if you're not on purpose. So if you, if you don't have purpose, they don't feel secure. They can't trust you. Now, if you go to them with a plan, I got this idea. Um, a good woman's going to try to shoot it down to make sure you're prepared for the world. Mm. People don't understand that. They think that, oh, she never supports my dream. No, no, no. Now, if she's bashing you publicly, that's a different story. But if she challenges you privately, that's her trying to make you better. And, and it took me most of 